something from the Old Testament, something from the New Testament, and something from the Quran to prove my point, to see the beauty that my faith endorses what was sent before and affirms and confirms that the Quran and the message of the Quran is the last, final, final and completed testament. If you go to Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you will see a general theme where the, where the people are instructed not to consume carrion, dead meat, not to, eat the, not to eat swine or pork, not to eat anything that was strangled, not to eat anything that, that has blood or not to consume blood. Are you familiar with this or you only know the New Testament? But now if you go to Isaiah, Isaiah speaks about the prophets of Baal, that they ate swine and they ate mice. So he, condo- he doesn't like that. Now I'm going to move on. New, Test- New Testament in the books of Acts. Basically, let me sum up here. The missionaries or the, some of the disciples had apostolic uh, uh, messages to go into Antioch and other lands. And in these places, they were told that the congregation, what rules you have to give them. So there was some uh, confusion, and they went, to, they went back to James the Just. This is Acts, basically. It will be under Acts 15, that whole chapter there. In Acts 15, James the Just told the congregation, okay, when you're going to go com- preach to the new nation, to the new Gentiles that are semi-Christians, semi-Jews, or just uh, the new converts, they're not too firm, Let's, what, what do we tell them? He told them, forbade them from eating carrion. Do not, give, do not let them consume any animal that was sacrificed to an idol. Do not have blood and do not, have, uh, do not eat anything that was strangled and abstain from fornication. Am I right or am I not right? This is past Jesus' ascension to heaven. Some laws were still in existence. So we have in the Old Testament one thing, the New Testament uh, the same thing. And then when you, code, if, when you study the laws of Paul, what happens? It becomes... Uh, annihilated, and you no more have these rules in, ex- in existence. Hence, the Christians follow Paul, and are not, uh, and basically have. Uh, that's a whole different subject matter, which I do not want to uh, go into. Now I'm coming to the Quran. This is a very significant verse. I'm going to tell you, which ties up the Old Testament, New Testament, and Final Testament. It is forbidden for you carrying dead meat. You're not allowed to eat dead meat. You're not allowed to eat blood. The flesh of the swine. And that animal that has been sacrificed for an idol, you are not allowed to partake of that. That has been strangled. And the Quran further talks about animal being rolled down or gorged by wild beasts, etc. So can you see the harmony of the Old Testament? What James the Just, the brother of Jesus, says in his letters, and what Jesus himself carried out, he was a law-abiding Jew, and what the Quran, the final testament, speaks about. Exact same thing. Carrion, forbidden. Blood, forbidden. Strangled meat, forbidden. Meat offered to an idol, forbidden. So when the Muslims say that we have some type of a connection and we believe that these books are divinely revealed, and we show these types of proofs, it makes my faith firm that I have to be a Muslim and, I have to f- and I'm forced to accept it ex- ex- exactly when, and, these, and you must remember the Prophet Muhammad had no access to the past books, he was unlettered. But the wording is exactly the same, strangled. It's a, and the Quran is Muslims, we believe, Nahnu, we are ummata wasata, we are the middle, middle nation. We are not as uh, stringent as the Jews. Nor, we are, nor are we as liberal as the Christians, but we have a middle path. And the Quran also gives an exception that that person who is desperate and has no food and, survive, and almost on the pangs of hunger, he will be permitted to eat of the unforbidden food. This is giving a big hand.